So now we're going to talk about an independent hypothesis test. And we're going to relate how it's similar to a dependent hypothesis test. Again, with any hypothesis test, the main steps that change are steps one and three. So we go through the same five steps, just one and three. Look, primarily the big differences are there. So our null hypothesis for a paired sample was that mu d, which mu d represented our mean population difference, was zero. Here we have a similar idea, but we have different symbols that we use. So mu d is only used for dependent samples. Since independent samples truly have two separate groups or two separate populations that they're trying to compare, we keep the mu's separate. So we call them mu1 and mu2. But our null hypothesis is still the idea that there is no difference between the two groups, so that they're equal to each other. For the alternative hypothesis, again, we have to decide which sign, the not equal to, the less than, or the greater than. Again, how we decide that is first, of course, we have to read the problem. The other thing we need to pay attention to in the independent hypothesis test is which thing you're calling the one versus the two subscript. So which one are you listing first versus second? That way you know how to compare them. Our decision rule is the same that we have seen before. So we are going to reject the null hypothesis and instead believe the alternative hypothesis if our p-value is less than our significance level of alpha. And step three is our other big changes, but most of these are on your formula sheet. So first, let's talk through those conditions. So first, you should note that the conditions for the confidence interval are exactly the same as they are for the hypothesis test. So you'll see I have the exact same conditions there, so I'm not going to go through reiterating those conditions. What I do want to pay, of course, some time paying attention to is what's going on with the actual test statistic formula. So here, because of that third condition and the population standard deviations being unknown, we're going to be using the t distribution again. Now our general form of a test statistic is that we have something minus something divided by something. So same form here. What we're going to start with is actually the difference in the sample means. So we're going to take the first sample mean minus the second sample mean. Again, making sure that the one and two subscript match what we have decided up there. So we're going to find the difference in sample means. And then just as in our paired sample, we're going to subtract off zero. Now where this zero is coming from is really from that null hypothesis. Our null hypothesis is that mu1 equals mu2. Or what that would mean, I could write it a different way, is that the difference in the population means would just be zero. So that's where that idea is coming from of a zero difference between the two groups. What we divide by is our standard error, which we're going to see from a similar formula back from the confidence interval. So we have our s1 squared over n1, plus our s2 squared over n2. And again, we're not actually going to do this entire calculation by hand. You could, but we're going to use StatCrunch to find the pieces of it to calculate it as well. Once we hit step four, we're generally getting that p-value from StatCrunch. So of course, I'll demonstrate how to get the p-value from StatCrunch. Once we have that p-value, we go back to step two to make our decision. And then finally, we get to make our interpretation. So as you can guess, in the next video, we'll go through an example of an independent sample's hypothesis test.